Hello and welcome to my new video. In this video I will introduce you my latest project, the Miniplank, a small ultralight aircraft. This plane is made of EPP foam and has only 650mm wingspan. With all the equipment it weighs around 250 grams. It's designed for long-range FPV flights, autonomous flights and also for fun flying in close range. The maximum flight time at an economical speed can reach over an hour. In the video I will briefly show you how this project came and will show some footage from the flights I've recorded so far. Let's quickly talk about the concept of a tailless aircraft. The conventional configuration of an aircraft with a tail provides longitudinal stability with the horizontal stabilizer which counteracts the wing's pitch in moment. Ensuring longitudinal stability in such a configuration is not a significant challenge and the aircraft is usually not very sensitive to the center or gravity position. However, it's different for a tailless aircraft. There are two main popular configurations for tailless aircraft and the methods of providing longitudinal stability differ in each of them. The first one is the swept wing. In this case, we can use multiply airfoils. Stability can always be achieved by applying the appropriate sweep and twist. However, for optimal performance, a group of airfoils with a low pitching moment close to zero are used. These are airfoils with low reflex, such as the Selig S5020. This requires less wing twist, resulting in better characteristics over a wide range of speed. The second solution is the plank, which is a wing without sweep or with very small sweep angle. In this case, the choice of the airfoil is crucial because it's the only mechanism providing longitudinal stability. It requires using an airfoil with a significant reflex to ensure a positive stabilizing moment. However, raising the trailing edge in addition to providing longitudinal stability also has negative consequences. It leads to decreased lift coefficient throughout the entire range of angles of attack, resulting in decrease in overall performance. So this is a cause of increased install speed, which we want to avoid. This can be compensated by increasing the camber of the airfoil. This improves the lift coefficient but also reduces the stabilizing moment at the same time. The position of camber is important here. Its position doesn't have a significant impact on the lift coefficient, but has major influence on the stabilizing moment. Closer it is to the leading edge, a greater a stabilizing moment is. Moving in backwards to the trailing edge reduces stability. However, this is not the end of considerations, because these actions may cause additional problems, such as boundary layer separation. The design of the airfoil must take all these aspects into account to find an optimal performance. Peter Wick has designed excellent and extensively tested airfoils for planks. For the mini plank project, I used the PW75 airfoil. Its application ensured a good compromise between maintaining longitudinal stability and satisfactory lift to drag ratio. Planks are very sensitive to the center of gravity position, especially in such a small aircraft. Even a few millimeters of difference can affect the flight characteristics. According to calculations on the XFLR5 program for this model, maintaining stability and zero pitching moment and zero degree angle of attack requires the center of gravity to be located 42 millimeters from the leading edge. The plane should fly evenly without any trimming. Here is a visualization of the complete final design. Soon a 3D printed version will also be finished. Two prototypes of this model have already been made and I will tell you more about it shortly. Let's move on to cutting parts. I cut everything from EPP foam of 20 gram per liter density using my own designed hot wire cutter. The fuselage required two cuts. I cut the top view and then the side view from the foam block. I also cut a wing slot. This concept required manual work and rounding of the fuselage edges. Here are the cut wings. Parts turn out smoothly. As you can see, the ailerons have not been cut out yet, so I will have to cut them manually. 
Now I will show you the main components I will use in this model. ESC is very lightweight 20 amps VL Hali S without any back. Motor is T Motor T1404 4600 kV. Battery is 2S 3 ampere hour lithium ion. And here is the fully assembled plane. As you can see, the fuselage has been manually rounded. This prototype is the first test model and I didn't add any flight controller or FPV equipment to it. The weight for manual flight is only about 215 grams. The plane flies great as expected. The calculated center of gravity proved to be effective and the test flight went smoothly without any adjustments. However, I wanted to make a few changes to the plane. I decided to cut the second prototype, this time using black EPP foam with slightly higher density of 25 grams per liter for the wings. I divided the wing into sections and cut the ailerons directly on the hot wire cutter. The fuselage remains the same, made of white EPP foam. In addition, I will change the motor to a T-Motor F1507 3800 kV and use a 4 inch propeller. The total weight of all the foam components is about 55 grams. That's very lightweight. As you can see, it also requires some manual work. The wings are reinforced with 1.5 mm carbon rods. The servos used are 5 gram Power HD DSM44 with metal gears. For FPV, I'm using the Worksnail Nano camera with V1 VTX and Lollipop 4 Plus antennas. Here is the completed model. You can also see the GPS module. I used Matek M10Q with a compass. It's not cheapest, but high quality GPS receiver. The battery is secured with Velcro in the front section of the fuselage. The flight controller is Matek F405 WMN with Arduino firmware installed. It's excellent choice for such small aircraft. We can also see the small Matek ELRS R24D receiver. It will provide a reliable RC link and long range. Now let's move on to the first flights with the full setup. The plane flies great and I managed to record some footage from various perspectives. My Mavic Mini 1 isn't the best equipment for this, as I had trouble keeping up with the plane, but I managed to capture some shots during loiter mode. And now, first automatic takeoff. Unfortunately, I don't have any onboard footage from the 4K stabilized camera, but I have some DVR recordings with OSD.
I recommend using the Yapu telemetry widget. It works very well with ELRS. The displayed parameters look nice and are easily readable. I also tested the plane in windy conditions. Due to its small size and weight, it's very sensitive to wind gusts, but despite that, it can still be flown successfully even in stronger winds.
This plane flies great. It has a very smooth stall characteristics and doesn't enter into a spin. It doesn't require trimming or raising the ailerons. A stable level flight can be achieved with throttle between 30 and 50%. In cruise mode, it's possible to achieve a current consumption below 3 amps. I didn't discharge the battery completely, but I flew continuously for almost an hour with a consumption of around 2.5 ampere hour. Such flight time easily covers long distances. Of course, a slightly larger battery pack can be used to further increase flight time while keeping the weight around 300 grams. On my website, there are three DXF format drawings that will enable you to cut your own mini plank. You can also find there the design of my CNC hot wire cutter. I will soon finish developing a 3D printed version of this plane and will also be available for purchase for a small fee. I will try to make a separate video about the printed plank too. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, follow Instagram and join the Flight Theory Tech group on Facebook. All links are available in video description. See you in the next video.